Hey everybody, Wayne here. This is my playthrough video for um, Königsberg, the Soviet attack on East Prussia, 1945. Published by Revolution Games. Recently released. Um, I know this game was released by a different publisher, I think, previously. Um, Revolution Games went ahead and upgraded, apparently upgraded art, upgraded everything. I've not, I have no experience with the prior version. Um, and... Here we have the new version that just came out, and let's go ahead and uh, we'll kind of look at the game here. I'll explain a couple things, and then we'll we'll get into it, and we'll we'll probably play. I think I maybe play the first two turns, and then go ahead and skip ahead, play a later turn. I just don't want to. Um, I explained this in my vlog. I don't want to try to. I don't think record the whole game. Uh, my first game took me a little over five hours, so I don't think anyone wants to watch five hours of a Hex Encounter game. So we're going to go ahead and uh, not worry about that. Um, but we'll get in a couple turns so you guys get a good idea how the game plays and whether the game is uh, right for you or not. So Konigsberg here is, a lot, in a lot of ways, it's, a, it's kind of an old school Hex Encounter style game. I mean, we're talking East Front, talking it's 1945 so it's late war you know soviet steamroller but it's an actually and i, I mean i have no experience with east prussia 1945 and gaming anything here it's interesting how you know the soviets they have the overwhelming numbers and you'll see that in this game but the germans have a lot of cool um, defensive opportunities here and you could take advantage of that which you have, I mean, you have to, to survive the Soviet onslaught. And my first game, the Germans had an overwhelming victory um, because the Russians, Soviets, only captured one victory point hex. So let me go ahead and explain the game so you guys kind of know what I'm talking about here. So like I said, that, that was the setup for the game. Everything is all set up right now. Uh, one mapper, standard size. I'm trying to get in the shot here. Um, there's plenty of pictures online if you guys need to check it out, but... Um, you know, one sheet of counters. There's not a lot of stacking. I think it's two combat units plus an HQ per hex. So you're not going to get huge stacks. You can see that you know, the largest stacks around here are, are three, and those aren't that large on the board. Um, they're not unwieldy at all. So how the game works is I have everything all set up here. Each side, and it's not just Germans, Soviets, believe it or not. It's actually, there's the Germans. You have so many activations per turn. So, let's go over to the turn track. And you might not be able to see, actually you can see that. So look at, say, turn one up here. I'm sorry if it's wiggling around a little bit. I'm trying to get up here. All right. So, turn one, where we're going to start. You can see where the Germans get three activations and then there's two different Soviets, and they each get three on the first turn as well. What does that mean? This is there's a number two and a number three. The Soviet fronts are actually broken up into two separate fronts. So that as the German German player, you do all the German units. And those activations control all of them. But for the Soviets, it's broken up into the second Belarusian, Belarusian, Belarusian front and the third Belarus in front. And what happens is, as you saw up there, it says three. So, and you can use these little activation limit chits here, which is I do. And as you pull your command chits, your HQ chits, you actually get to activate them depending on either those two fronts or obviously the Germans. So what do I mean by pull command chits? Well, this is a chit pull game. What that means is, you little cup, find yourself a little bowl. I like these little stainless steel bowls because they look kind of cool. And you go ahead and you, you know what it starts on the board. It tells you what to set up, what goes in here, and then what is will be available later for reinforcements. Which, if you look at an angle, you can start seeing how the Soviets definitely have the advantage in reinforcements. There are some German reinforcements, but the Soviets by far have more. So you would say it's the beginning of the turn. Let's see, we're starting right now. It's in here, pull one out, what do we got here? All right, so it's Soviet. Trying to get the focus in here. All 
Well, I'm sorry. It's not focusing. I got to depress it. Um, that's 2BF, so second Belarus in front. And it's the 65th Army. So you could go ahead and you can put her down here. As you can see, now you can see 2BF, 64. And you look for the 64. Oh, excuse me, 65. I don't know why I said 64. 65. 65 is this. I don't know. So 65 right here. And so you would be able to command this headquarters. And what you can do is this headquarters, he has, and this is where I'll explain the units, he has a four command rating um, and then a four movement. And so the four command rating is how many hexes away he can command units. Now, generally, you start off, most of your units are going to be within your command radius, either just at the edge or really close. Like here, they're you know one hex away. Um, later on, you'll you start maneuvering, you engage in combat, um, advance after combat. And there are a couple, especially the Germans, where they're kind of, the units are spread out a little more. You might have to move your headquarters to be able to put a unit um, in command. When a unit's out of command, there's no negative effects other than it just can't be commanded, obviously, by that headquarters. So I activate them. So now what I can do is I can move and fight. And then I have it, very standard. This is where the kind of the old school standard stuff comes in. You know, attack strength, defense, and move. Attack, defense, and move. Um, and movement points, you know, train effective charts tell you how many. It's very standard, you know, roads are one, unless you're doing strategic movement, half. Um, then you can do unlimited movement on railways as long as you don't enter zone and control the enemy. All pretty standard stuff. Um, there's infantry, and then there are uh, mechanized units. There's the tanks. You're going to see tanks, half tracks. Um, there's no special effects other than obviously they generally have much higher movement. You know, double the movement of these um, infantry units here. So let me think. All right, so you'd activate them. You move them. Engage in combat. And you'll see the combat. I'm not going to explain that now because you'll see it as we play. Um, and you know when you're drawing from that cup, you're going to get, besides the, you're also going to get random events. Those are going to pop up. You might roll for them might be something that it tells you to just do. You might take units off the board, put units back on the board. The Germans uh, reach a point where there's a random event where they run out of gas. So then it, um, they actually get their units reduced. Speaking of which, um, unit either has one or two sides. And, you know, just flip her over. See the reduced side. Numbers are in red. Stands out. Very easy to see. And then, okay, before I forget, so combat can be, can be influenced by um, air units. So basically send in air support. And how you do it is each front, so either the Germans, they have only they only have one air unit, or we call it a squadron, or whatever, whatever you want to say it. So there's one counter they can use. Um, second Belarus in front has three, and then the third Belarus in front has four. And what it is, is it's column shifts to your advantage. So, and you can pick to either use it as the plus two or flip her over and plus one. So the thing is, what happens is, say you use it, if you use it at a plus two and you use it and it works, doesn't work, whatever the case may be, after you use it, let's go on over. There's an air base box over here. You would put it in grounded. And then there's a step at the beginning of the next turn. You would move him over to refit. And so then the next turn after that, you'd get him back. But if you had just done plus one, he just goes right into refit. And so then that next, beginning of the next turn, boom, he comes back. So if you use a plus one column shift, you're going to get him back the next turn every time. Use the plus two, it's going to take a bit, you know, it's going to take two turns to get him back. So, all right. I think that's it for kind of just explaining the game quick. Like I said, it's pretty standard. There's not, you know, nothing outrageous. Um, you're combining a little bit of the old school style with chip pulling, which for me, I generally love. Um, let's see how it plays in this game. So we'll come back here and we'll uh, we'll get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So as I said, it's the first turn. And on the first turn, there are three activations for the Germans, three for the Soviet second Belarusian front and three for the third Belarusian front. No reinforcements come into play. And I didn't explain this in the beginning, but replenishment at the bottom, you can see replenishment points. Um, obviously, you can use those to either take reduced units and 
make them whole or bring in defeated units, eliminated units. So turn one, let's go ahead and start. Got our little triple cup here. And I promise I'm not, well here, let's see, you guys can see, let's see what we're gonna do here. All right, I'm looking away. You guys might be, I'm looking away. I can't see what's pulling. Okay, here we go. What do we got? Oh, it's gonna be a problem zooming in on these little chits, isn't it? That's there we go. So second Belarus of so Soviet, second Belarus in front, and the forty eighth army. So let me go ahead and zoom in here. Alright, there we go. So the forty eighth army. You can see on the second Belarus in front. I just want to give you guys a little bit of an overview here. This will be our first activation. I don't know if you saw this. I'm sorry, I don't know if I showed it. I put it over on the on the first spot, so we have up to three. And I went ahead and put it on number one. So when it gets, we have three, we no longer get to pull these anymore. Well, we'll pull, if we pull them, they just don't activate. Set them aside, pull again, until you get one that can activate. Until the Germans and then the two Russian fronts have each had their max number of activations. So, all right, so we got the 48th Army here. Let's see what do we got here. Alright, we're looking at, so you see the headquarters here, so it starts, their activation range starts at the beginning, so um, his command range here of four, one, two, you know, one, two, three, obviously his units are right next to him, so he has no problems, and, and this is something I, again, did not explain at the very beginning, um, these headquarters, uh, see the blue band underneath, that's, you know, that's tied, that's how they're tied together, so that's how you know. And um, Russian or Soviet headquarters can each command two um, units that don't have a formation color. So here we get this light blue formation color. As long as it's in this command range, a Soviet unit could command two. So one, two, two units, excuse me. So one, two, three. See, there's no formation color. One, two, three, four. Boom. So he can command both of these as well. And you can kind of look around, get an idea of which ones you want to command. I think there's, yep, see there's another one over here. He can command this one either too. Um, and so you can command them as well as your own units, that formations units. And you can do this just like you would normally. Um, it starts off from where the headquarters is activated at. So if I move, he's a four movement. So if I moved him and say I moved him, you know, Moved him over, over here, which I mean, obviously I'd have to stop because of the German units. I wouldn't want to move him that way, but whatever. Say I move him up, uh, up here. Move north. Well, then he would be out of range of them. Yes, he as long as he was in four hexes to start, he could still he still commands them, obviously, right? Um, but then if I moved him up here and the next turn they activated again, no, then I'd be out of range of him. So, all right. Well, you can see here. These defensive lines. So the German, this is the, the like squiggly line with the dots. The Germans um, in my first game were able to move up and get behind these defensive lines. Yes, there's a minor river here. That's going to hurt me a little bit. But I think I'm going to be able to, I should move up here. You know, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We want to be careful though. So, all right, here's movement for you. Because we're going to, I have a little plan here for, uh, my little uh, 48th Army here. So this formation of light blue units, four mo four movement points. That's his movement allowance is four. So you can move four. And pretty standard, I'll explain. On a road, ignore terrain. And he's on this road. He's gonna, I'm going to head up this way. Now there's zone of controls in this game. And zone of control is plus two to movement, um, the required movement to enter that hex. Or plus two to leave. Um so, it would be one plus two for that, so two, three. Now, he can't move anymore. He doesn't have enough movement points left to move. You know, he can't move here. So, that would be two for leaving a zone of control, two for entering a zone of control, and he'd have to do one for the terrain, five. So, actually, he could never he could never move this way, um, barring, you know, combat result or anything like that. So, I'll go ahead and move him there. And he stopped. One. And that's two, three, four. And we're gonna go ahead and move up. 
So let's go ahead and move up this infantry as well. One. Not a road hex, but it's clear terrain, so it's still just one movement point. One. Hmm. Well, this one's going to be tricky. You know, I should have went the other way. Oh, shoot. I should have went the other way. Oh, well, I'm too late now. All right, so... So one, two, and then he can't move here. I want to move there, but I don't have enough points because I have to. One for the terrain, two for zone of control, and then also there's a minor river hex, minor river on the hex side here. So that's another plus one. So he could he could move it next turn with his full movement if he gets um, activated again. So and then headquarters. I'm gonna move him up just so he is. I'm gonna move him right there. That way he's protected as well. So you generally don't want to leave your headquarters uncovered unless they're way behind enemy lines. Or behind your lines. Yeah. If they're behind enemy lines, then you need to be protected. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Now I'm looking at it here. Sorry, just to show you guys. Um back again here. So combat is voluntary. I'm looking at it. And just to give me, I'm not gonna engage in combat, but if you could see I don't think I am, hang on. So if you could see, it would be four, you know, the attack, four, plus four, so eight, against his defense of three, which, you know, you do the math, that's a two-to-one attack, two-to-one, um, and then because he's high, behind a defensive line, it negates all retreats. You know, maybe I will do an attack. Actually, I will do an attack. Just see, I can see one right away. So, calculated it here, he'll attack, um, two-to-one. Which is not great attack rods, but I'm going to go ahead and da -da -da, I'm going to use one of my little Air Force guys here. I'm going to use it on the plus two. So he goes all the way over here whoop, to the grounded box, but I get a plus two column shift to the right. And if you see the uh, CRT here, I have a, it's on the board, but I have a bigger one I was able to print out. Thanks for Revolution Games. You can see here, so two to one becomes four to one. So let's go ahead and give her a roll. I like to have the dice. I got the one for the Germans and they're attacking, and then the Soviets. So four to one, huh? Let's see what we got. And by the way, apologies for the White Dog Games dice tower here. That's it's what I got. Um, I need one for I think each publisher of the games I play. So I need a Revolution Games. I need a Holland Spiel, DVG dice tower. I need GMT. But, you know, that takes money away from the game, so let's have to use this one. All right. Six. All right. So, rolled a six on the four to one. What does that get me? D1, R2. So, pretty standard. Defender takes one loss and then retreats two. Um, now, as... So, the good news. He does take the loss. So, I'm going to flip this bad boy over here. All right, so he is now reduced. However, if you go over to, do I have it on the, yeah, I do it on my big one too. All right, defensive line there, defense line. Um, if you look at under combat effect, negates all retreat results. So normally he would have to retreat two hexes. He's not treated at all. So takes, you know, he's hurting, he's hurting, but he's standing strong behind those defensive lines. And that's what you have to do as the German players, take advantage of those defensive lines. So, all right, that was the first one. Let's go ahead and um, draw again from the cup. Let's see what we can get here. All right, so the German 7th Panzer. This one, I believe, yeah, this one's an interesting one. So, the 7th Panzer, I'll go ahead and put it under the Germans under their first activation here. So, move my dice around. Yeah, there's, it's not blocking any units, just to be clear here. Um, so, the German 7th Panzer, as you can see, at the he doesn't have any um, subordinate units. So, he's not part of a formation. So, what he can do, though, is he can activate, you know, he, no color underneath him. He can activate more than just the three. Now remember, it's Soviet headquarters can activate two units without a formation, color, um, the Germans can activate three. 
this seventh Panzer. I know we can activate more than three. Let me check the rules here. Um, just to make sure. And, and they call them independent units, by the way. I should probably just call them that. Independent units. Those are the ones without a formation color. All right, special rules. Is it under special rules? No, it's probably under command chits. I've seen it before, I swear. Well, this is annoying. There it is, under command, yeah, it's under command. German 7th Panzer Headquarters. Has no units under direct command. It can command five independent units within its command range. All right, first of all, that's awesome, five. Um, downside is, there's not a lot of units to start with. They're in its command range. Um, what do we got here? So within its command range, which is six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy here, this reduced infantry. Uh, six, this reduced infantry. Um, yeah, kind of a mess here. He really can't, can't get too many. So what I like to do, what I think I'm gonna do here is I wanna move him over. If you look over, so he's here, the seventh panzer. See, there's these units that are just chilling. I'm gonna go pick them up. Oh, pick them up, you know what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over there and I'm going to use, so instead of, and he has an eight movement already, which is nice. He's a, I guess he's a panzer, you know, panzer unit. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use strategic movement as well. I don't even know if it'd be necessary, but that's what I'll do. Which strategic movement is you move on roads, you, as long as you don't start in a zone of control, enemy zone of control, you know, you're not, you don't enter one, you don't end your turn in one, you can do strategic movement, which is half of, Half a movement point per per road hex. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see. All right. Yeah, he's in a good spot now. I like where he is. Okay, so we're gonna let him let him hang out there. Um, obviously now he can't activate these now because he. He started over here. He had to move over here. But next time he's activated, he'll be able to grab all these, these three, four, these four units here um, and then move them up. Oh, I should have grabbed, I should have went up to the 20th Panzer there. Or 20, 24th Panzer, is that the one? I should have went and grabbed them. Huh. Oh, no biggie. All right, on to the next one. Set it. Maybe I'll just set it down and then do it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so here we go. The third Belarusian front, so Soviet, third Belarusian front, the 28th Army. So we go over to the third Belarusian front, 28th Army, the blue guy over here. Let's see, where's he at? All right, that's a good one, too. All right. Let's see if I can get him. Okay. Hmm. What should we do with this guy? So he's got this is part of his formation. And the infantry mechanized. Two more infantry here with him. We definitely want to move up and engage. We want to get up there. We don't want to be fooling around. Um, waiting for the Germans to get in their defensive positions. Um, so as you can see, there's defensive lines here, and we're next to them now. The Germans are behind, you know, they're, they're a hex behind. We can move up and get behind their defensive lines. I really like that idea. So let's go ahead and, so, it would be just one, and they enter zone of control, so three. And he will go with three, which he can, he can pay the four. Um, let's see. These guys will move one and then two, three, four. Okay. So yeah, they can all move and it. And technically move them one at a time, but I moved them all. So whatever. I did what I did. Um, oh yeah. They're going to attack. You got that right. Let's see. You guys see it from there. I'm trying to Gets enough to necessarily hold it the whole time here. 
Sorry about that, everybody. So I didn't. I have a, over, a little bit more of an overhead camera, which I did for other another playthrough, uh, a couple of the playthroughs. But I wanted. I feel like for a hex encounter game, especially the half in, half inch counters, that you need to kind of zoom in a little better. So, all right. So here's what we just did. We just moved the 28th Army up here, and we're going to engage this German infantry unit right here. We're going to attack him, and I have a feeling we're going to whoop on him. So. Go ahead and calculate attack, attack odds. So four, five, six, seven. Headquarters does not have an attack. So seven plus four, it's 11. No, 13, 14. All right, so 14 and tis three. So what is that 14 divided by three? What is that, four? Four to one odds. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and use um, one of their Units, but we're gonna do it on the plus one. So, which means he instead of going to the grounded, he just goes to um, refit. So, all right, set so four to one. All right here, the four to one becomes five to one. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. So five to one odds. What do we got? A four. All right, a four on five to one odds is defender one. Defender one um, slash retreat two. What's the slash for? Is that supposed to say that defender one slash retreat two? What does that mean? Do someone get to choose? Hmm. Um, let me look at the rule book quick. I don't, I don't know if I ever got that in my first game at all. Maybe I did and I didn't realize it. Defender 1 slash retreat. But it's D1 slash R2. So Defender 1 or Retreat 2? Who gets to pick? Let me see here. Sorry, I'm trying to read the I'm trying to read the book here. <laughs> My apologies, exciting, gripping uh, playthrough here. Um the defender always either affects attack or the defender. Possible results are I don't I don't know what the slash is. Oh I think that means um well, no, I don't know what it would mean. Defender 1, R2. So, you know what? I think it's I think it's a, it's a typo. I think that is a typo on this. I don't know. I'm just going to call it a typo and say it actually is. Because here's the deal. Understand, because what they're saying is, so if you look at the CRT under 5 to 1, if you're all 3, see how it's AR asterisk slash D1R? What that means is that the defender has to takes a damage and retreats. If the defender can't retreat or doesn't retreat, say they're behind a defensive line, the attacker actually retreats. That's what that means with the slash there and then the asterisk. And so you can see like, and then you can see on say four to one odds on the number four. If you roll a four, see, same thing. AR asterisk slash D1R, you know, again, the defender can't retreat. That means the attacker retreats. Well, you look over to the four, when you roll, excuse me, if you roll a four on a five to one, it's D1 R2, D1 slash R2. I assume that means then that that slash was a mistake and it's supposed to be um, just D1 R, no slash in the middle. So D1 R2, that's what we're going with. Um, they can correct me if they <laughs> see the video and say, hey, no, it's supposed to be that, then we'll figure it out from there. But I can't find it and I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. So here we go. What that means for purposes of this combat is since we rolled a four on the five to one, that means defender takes one hit and retreats two. So you can see the defender here. He would be re reduced. Oops, it's always a little harder with the to flip him over. All right, so he's reduced one and he has to retreat two. Um, 
And the Germans are, the way the rules work, it's, it's a little vague, but they're supposed to retreat north or west if possible, Soviet south or east if possible. There's a little diagram on the um, little cheat sheet thing they give. So since he can retreat north and east, I'll just say that that's what he does then, just kind of go with that. So just retreat two, and there's no one, two. There's no effect on, you know, he doesn't have to use movement points, crossing rivers, anything like that. You know, if he was had to go into his own control, he would lose a step, which at that point would obviously eliminate him. All right, so that's cool. Not only that, but we, we're going to go ahead and, so you can advance after retreat. Infantry units can advance one hex and mechanized units. So a cool, you know, tank silhouette or half track silhouette, they can advance two and the first hex has to be into where the defender was, and then they can advance anywhere else they want after that, ignoring zone of control, ignoring terrain, anything like that, which is pretty awesome. So, um, what we just have, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, we do have a, should I? It's kind of crazy. Crazy idea. I'd be kind of alone though, won't he? You know what, we're gonna do it. We're crazy enough to do it. All right, so, this mechanized. It's gonna advance here, and then advance into the city. Um, this infantry here well the stack so the stack of two infantry in the headquarters will advance here this infantry is going to chill and stay put so alright good not too bad alright so we got now German HG alright HG is brown brown how exciting all right, so where are the HGs? Brown, brown, brown. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, that was what we were uh, just whooping on, I think. Yeah, that's exactly what we were just whooping on that HGs over here. So, there it is, my little, little guy was blocking. So, HGs activate. Um, H, just to say the HG headquarters activates. Here it is. Command range is six. So, like we talked about before, he can command, you know, his own formation color, which it looks like it's just these three here. Is that it? Make sure I don't miss anybody behind. Okay, yep, yep, that's it. So he has these three units, which two of which are now reduced, and then he can command up to three independent units, as long as they're within his command range. So, let's see. Okay, he's gonna stay there. Oh, I know, I know what we'll do here. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin by, for independent units, he's gonna command this one, who is one, two, three, four, five, six away, so we can grab him, and command him. They move here, one, and then here, two, and plus zone of control, um, three, four. Plenty, very easy for a mechanized unit with eight movement points. Um, and move this guy up again very easy I'm gonna count it out he's got eight no problem there should I move the other guy over yeah you know what? we're gonna do it so I cross over to join him here so that's one two for crossing the river so one for the train two for crossing the minor river or an extra one so it's two total plus two for any zone control so four so you can just do it we're gonna stand stand tall here. Alright, and then Alright, they're gonna to attack too. So seven, eight, nine. Oh no, would they? Yeah, they will. Okay, good. Let's say they're caught they're attacking into a into a city. That'll be fine. There's a there's a road there's a river here, but there's a road, so the road cancels the, the minor river, so that's fine. You can attack through it that way. Alright, so seven. Eight nine, and then only this guy in the stack. So can't it? You know the other guy wasn't activated as part of the stack. Should have, but too late now. I didn't. I said I didn't. I didn't say I did. So too late now. I guess. Damn. Let's see what happened? Cause I one. Yeah. Oh well. Too late now. Shoot. All right. So seven eight nine, 
and then here's 15 against two, so seven to one odds. All right, you can't go any better than seven to one odds. Is it really seven to one odds? Good God. All right, well, I'm about to whoop them. All right, let's see, seven to one, let's see what we got here. All right, three, so seven to one. A three means D2, R2. Now, here's something though. So D2, R2, so it would be two, it takes two hits and it's retreat two. Um, he is in, what is that? Is that a city or town? He's in a town, Gumbinen. Cool, Gumbinen. He's in the town of Gumbinen. So a town, a little hard to see there, but negates first loss and first retreat. Now it was two and two. So the first one negated for both, but it's still one one. So it still basically would be D1, R1. So, oh, sorry. All right, so D1, so he's reduced. And R1, he does have to retreat. Oh, he's about to get it good, I think. Hang on, let me check the rules here. Let me check the rules on retreats. Um, All right, so he's going to be destroyed here. So what happens is he's forced to retreat. He is forced to retreat one. Um, why is my thing getting all crazy here? Okay. All right. oh, there we go. Trying to fix my camera. Sorry, folks. All right, so he has to retreat. Let's retreat one, which... If he enters his zone of control, he takes another loss. And there's only two places to go. He can go even remote. Well, he can go but zone of control. There's a bunch of them, bunch of them. And even back here, zone of control from that infantry. Um, wait, does zone of control extend across? Minor rivers? It might not. Hang on. Let me check. Let me check. I'm just double checking zone of control um, across. So I'm thinking about it. I don't. You might not have a zone of control across. Unbridged major rivers, but it doesn't. My it's a minor river, so zone of control does extend across the minor river. Therefore, he is eliminated. Bummer for him. Bummer for the Soviets. All right, so get to advance after combat, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and advance this bad boy. And we're going to advance. This bad boy. Oh, yeah, looking good now. We got some nice mechanized units up here in uh, Gumbinen. Nice. Germans are looking pretty good. All right, cool. That was easy. Hmm, all right. Go ahead and keep drawing. All right, what do we got here? Oh, German 27th Corps. So now, if you look up here, I'll show you. We are, that is the last. So the German 27th Corps is the last. They can only activate three this turn, so that's it. So the Germans are done activating um, formations. So, green 27th Corps. Where are these bad boys? Whoop. All right, so. Back over here. You see him down there? I tilt my camera a little bit. All right, there we go. So you can see him over there. You know what I'm going to do with these guys? It's going to be a pretty quick one, too, here, because I don't think I'm going to do any combat over here. Probably not. Um, so this is the 27th core, the green bad boys here. And I can activate up to three independent units. So you can see there's what five six of them right here so i can't activate all of them but i can activate up to three of them i want to get my units behind defensive lines here so that when this soviet onslaught starts moving north we're better prepared to meet them so these guys look pretty good i'm gonna move him back one 
And it's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all these guys. Um, no, 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 I know, I know. Move him up here to here. And then yep. him over here, and I can still activate. So it's all the actual green formation, the twenty seventh core. I can still activate two more independent units, which definitely activate this bad boy. He's tough. Six four eight. Um, oops. The one, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. And then one more. I have eight, one more independent unit. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll leave him at the some kind of a backup in the town here. With this guy. One. Two. And then it's um three, four for the zone of control, but not worried about that. Looking good now. Looking good now. Alright. So that's it for the Germans. Um Go ahead and what else we get here. Okay, so see now it's 20th uh, German, 20th core. Doesn't apply, so what I always do is I just set it aside and it'll go back in the thing, but uh, in the chip pull here. But it, you, you can't activate. They already have three activations for the turn, so that's it for them. So, okay, okay Germans 23rd. Nope, sorry, Germans. And the, the first couple turns, um, the Germans have a lot of them because I think. Almost all their units are on the board. I think there's maybe one headquarters they have coming up later. So, yeah, that's why you, you get them more to start with. Up again, the Germans here. Um, so, no. Sorry, Germans. All right, here we go. Second Belarus in front. The third army. Silver. So, boop, over there. Here we go. It's these bad boys right here. So, yeah, we got plans here. We got to move up here and see what we can do. So, let's charge at him here. Um, let's go ahead and snatch up. I think these, let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, so, oop, sorry. Here you can see these mechanized units. They're going to grab up both of these here and um, start moving them first, actually, I think, because they got good attack. So, one, two, three, four. Five, six, and then enter zone of control. Seven, eight, but he can he can stop there. That works. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for zone of control. Boom, that's eight. So oh, that's gonna be nice. I think I'm gonna do a little attack there. All right. We're gonna go ahead and do. We got here a couple of infantry underneath him. Yeah, okay. The movement is a stack. Four movement on each. Every unit has four. So one, two. Oh, they can't can't enter here though, because it would be they already have used two, so they only have two more movement points left. It would be one to move, but then because it's only control, it's plus two. So it'd take three to move in there. They only have two left. So they literally cannot they can move there, they can go there, but that's not I want to Send them up this way. I think this is what the third army is going to go up. Is go up that way. So, all right. Okay. One, two, and he'll have to stop there as well. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, I'm going to get an attack in though. Soviets here. They feel good. They're going to attack here. Oh, he is in. Okay, so he's in the woods, so he gets a shift down. So that does help him um, with the odd shift. But um, it would be 12 to 3. So 4 to 1. 
drops down to three to one. However, I'm definitely going to use um, one of my air units as the plus one. So I'll put them over here in the airbase box under uh, refit because I'm only doing the plus one. Let's see. So what was it? What did I say here? So it's it was uh, four to one. Drops down to three to one because um, the defender here is in the in a woods hex. But I'm going back up four to, to four to one because of uh, the air support. <sighs> nice. All right. I just realized that I didn't use the the Germans didn't use air support when they had their one attack. Dang it. Oh well. That's too bad. All right. So four to one. Let's see what we got here. All right. Four to one. A four. Okay, so here we go. So this is, I think, where we're going to be. Oh, no, we're going to be fine here. Okay, so 4 to 1, 4, AR, AR, uh, asterisk, slash, D1R. So what this is, like I explained before, means that, um, so the defender takes one hit and then has to retreat. If they cannot retreat, the attacker has to retreat. So what that would be is if they were in the town, city, that negates retreat results. They were behind a defensive line that negates retreat results. Um, bind a uh, festung line, a fortress. Basically, those are those are the red lines. You don't you don't see them a whole lot. There's a few up around um, Koenig, and then here's some over here. The red lines here. Those are the festung. So it's like fortress, like German for fortress. Um, anyway, so he takes a hit and he has to retreat one. But, and because it's coming across, see the hex side there? There's nothing. It's clear. He doesn't have any defensive. There's no, you know, nothing preventing him from retreating. That means he will take the hit. So he will be reduced. And then he does have to retreat one. Um, well, he's definitely not going to retreat into his own control and destroy himself. So he will just retreat. I think he retreat over here. There we go. Now, I will advance after combat. And gosh, I advance that way too. That might be the way to do it here. Sorry, I'm kind of thinking out loud here. So I'm thinking, um, thinking advance. So as mechanized, remember they can advance two. So the first hex has to be first hex has to be where the defender was. So boom. But I can actually advance up to here as well. That's what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna. I'm I'm getting him out of the way. Basically, I'm moving him out of the way to send my army up here. So, oh no, should I fucking find so I can send him up this way? Oh, this is hard I'm trying to figure this out. You know what? I'm gonna leave him there because I actually do want to keep fighting. So I want to kind of attack this way. So the 49th army is gonna have an open space eventually and can work their way up. So, all right, that's what I'm gonna do. So he's gonna chill right there. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and uh, on to the next here. Because we have, so the Germans are done with activations. The second Belarus in front, they have one more. And then the third Belarus in front, they have two more. All right, so what do we got here? All right, barrage. All right, cool. So, oh, that reminds me. I did not start, I did not start off with the beginning barrage in the game. Um, that is in the rules, and I completely blinked on that. So, yeah. We're going to have to just, obviously, it's too late now. But uh, just as a heads up. So besides this barrage here, which I just pulled, um, in the rules, the first turn only, there is a barrage where you roll on the barrage table, which I'm going to explain, and then the Germans get to do barrages, and then the Soviet players get to do barrages. I apologize, I completely forgot that, so bad on me on that one. Um, I'll be honest, my first game, it didn't do a whole lot, but it's still no excuse for forgetting, so I apologize for that. But we did get a barrage now. And um, it's a barrage, second BF, so second Belarus in front. So what that means is we roll on the barrage table. So we roll 1d6. Six, nice. All right, so then you roll, you look on the barrage table over here, and you can see a six means three. So I get three barrage rolls, which a barrage roll is you roll it to an attack. It's a two to one attack and against units that are adjacent to you. So what does that mean? I'll show you. Uh, let me see. Let me see if, by the way, if uh, forest applies to this, because I want to attack a forest down here. So I think I want to attack uh, my guys that I was just attacking, but I got to see if 
Barrage. I don't think it does, but... Because I think if they're in the city, it affects it, but... That's right, there's no column shift for... I think that's what it is, oh, column shift for. Of course, I can't find it when I need to when I'm, when I'm recording, when I'm filming here. Um... All right, I'm. I don't. I'm not gonna keep looking. Yeah, I'm not looking. Okay, I don't think so though. I'm pretty sure that I remember reading that it does not. So what that means is so I have three rolls on a two to one here, and what I'm gonna do is it has to be adjacent. So this is a barrage, and there's no attackers. This isn't this unit attacking that one because there you'll you'll get on you'll roll on the attacker retreat, and that does not apply during a barrage. So I'm, I'm barraging that hex right there. So. Doo -doo. Go ahead and see what I can do. Five. So it's a two to one table. So two to one, five, defender, DR2, defender retreats two. Awesome. Okay. So. So they're going to retreat up here. Shoot. Ah. A little easier when I'm just doing it without holding a camera in the other hand. <laughs> All right, so they retreated. Now, because there's no attack, I don't get to advance after combat because it's just a barrage, but clearly it moves them out of the way. Um, let's see here, and I have two more over here also. That's kind of crazy. Um, let's go ahead and do on this stack right there. A one. Okay, so two to one on when roll a one is attack or retreat. There's no attacker, so ignore it. And the final one, six. Six on a two to one is defender takes one damage and retreats, D1R. Wow, okay, so. Um, now, what you, how you do it is the highest defense, if they're being attacked, takes the loss. If there's more than one in a stack. Or if you're attacking, it'd be the highest attacking value, which this has, he has the highest defending value. So he takes the loss. Ooh, he's with him. And he has to retreat. Or retreat up here. So retreat out of the way. Nice. Not bad. I like pulling the barrage. I feel bad about missing the barrage for the beginning of the game, but uh, you get to see a barrage in action here in the first turn. So it worked out in the end, right? All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's pull some more here. So you'll have one more over here and two more over there. So, all right. So the Germans ignore that. All right, second Belarus in front and the 65th army. And that's their last one. Um, see, right on there, activation limits. That's three for them. So, all right, second Belarus in front, 65th. All right. So those bad boys are right down here. We need to get, get them up into the action. And I think they want to grab these two units as well, these two independent units. So, definitely. Hmm, let's see here. All right, let's go ahead and let's get them heading up this way here. So one, two, I should do move strategic movement, huh? Yeah, although he's not gonna make it anyway. So do strategic movement, one, two, three, and they'll have to stop here because it's changing when we can't enter a zone of control. So, your four movement. Can you do strategic movement on a railroad? Well, railroad is unlimited anyway. So, again, as long as you follow. So, I don't know if I explained that before. So, if you're on a railroad here, as long as you don't enter a zone of control, start, enter, start at one. All right, sorry about that. Um, so, as I was explaining, uh, rail movement, strategic movement. So, rail movement is unlimited. So he's going to move along the rail um, all the way up to here, and he will combine with him. Um, it's a little rough here because, unfortunately, he gets kind of the shaft here. 
because he starts in the middle of this woods. It's just a move, you know, one, two, oops, excuse me, one, two, three, four. So kind of gets shaft a little bit on that. Um, didn't get to join up with them, but that's okay. All right, trying to move, you know, move that army up to towards the front here. Um, see so what do we got here? So we need, okay, the third Belarusian front can activate two more armies, and then that's it for the first turn. So let's see what we got here. Oh no, so Germans, so no. Um, <laughs> nope. On the running out of command shits here. All right, third Belarus in front, the fifth army. Here we go. Boom, so then we get one more after this. What do you know? All right. So the green guys over here. Okay, you can see where they are. Oops. Oh. Let's go ahead and uh, get them guys moving here. We want to get them up closer. And he's going to grab. Let's see, he's going to grab these two, I think, right here, too. So let's go ahead and start moving them. One, two. Three, and then four, five, six. That's fine. You move him to join him. And then he will move here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can join him. And then these each have four. I'm just gonna move up here and stop. All right, I think we're gonna engage in combat here too. Yep, we're gonna attack that guy right in the middle. So four, that's eight, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 versus three. So what's 18 divided by three? Six, six to one odds, cool. We'll also use one of our air army unit on refit side, so the plus one, so it's seven to one odds now. This is gonna be a whoop in here. Four on seven to one, so seven to one, you get a four. You're looking at D2, R2. All right, so, and it was there attacking him. Um, nothing to take away losses or anything like that, so he takes two damage, which eliminates him. This is the first German unit eliminated, and it will not be the last, trust me. All right, so call this a breakthrough here. Go ahead and say we're going to get these two guys moving up. And then they're going to stay there, though. They don't want to move too far ahead. They're going to stay there. That's okay. All right. Not bad. That we got a breakthrough already here. A little, a little one anyway. All right. Draw again. Oh, Germans. Draw again. Germans. Hopefully it's in there. Hopefully there's some another third Belarus in front. Germans. Like I said, the Germans though, they start off with, you know, vast majority. So that's how it, that's how it works. Here we go. So the last one for this for this turn, the first turn of the game. Soviet third Belarus in front, the 39th army, which was it's these guys over there. So they wanna get up into the fight, I think. So we're gonna go ahead and do. Let's see. They can do one. Then he enters, mechanized entering woods is two. So that's two plus crossing a river. So it's a total of three. And then, so it'd be four, five, six, seven. Those are the, um, it's on a control, but he can do it. So he will go over here. Let's see. That's one crossing a river. And then the train is only one for him. So that's two. He can't go up here though because of the, yeah, because of the zone of control. So it'd be three and then four or five with the zone of control. So that won't work, but he'll stay there. These guys will follow the road. One, two. And they wouldn't be able to go there. Um, and then he'll go one, two. Stop here as well. Or should he go, let's see, one. And then two, three. Yeah, he'll join him. Okay. All right. Getting in the position, getting in the position. All right, so that is the first turn um, of the game. Um, I did, <laughs> like I said, I messed up on the barrage. So it would be, you saw a barrage in action, so I'm glad you got to see that.
The game starts off with the, the Germans and Soviets each get a roll, each get two rolls on that barrage table, um, and then units up to two hexes distance they can do barrages against. You know, my first game, I think it affected one unit maybe, um, but it's not to say that I shouldn't have remembered. I should have remembered it. I uh, made a mistake there. But other than that, that was the first turn. Um, I'm going to stop the video now, and then I'm going to go ahead probably and do another video going into the second turn, maybe go into the second and third. Um, but for now, I think this one will be long enough for kind of a little overview of the game to get into it, and then seeing the first turn, seeing the game in action. All right, well, thanks, guys, for watching. I uh, hope you like the game. Hope you like what you see. If you do, you know, definitely check the game out. It's from Revolution Games. Um, it is available now. And it's not expensive at all. So it's a very affordable game. And I've already gotten a lot of hours out of a lot of enjoyment out of it. So check it out. Um, go ahead and check out the rest of my videos too if you want. You know, subscribe to my channel. Let's go ahead and uh, play some more games, all right? I'll see you guys until next time. Bye. Hey there, back already. <laughs> so I was uh, editing my video. And I realized that I kind of left some stuff out. I didn't really follow the exact um, turn sequence. And I feel bad about that because I want to give the game a fair shake and make sure I actually cover everything. Um, so I skipped two things at the beginning of the game. One is the first turn only, one's every turn. And I skipped the end, um, end phases. So I don't know. I had a seizure or something. I don't know why or, you know, why I skipped... Um, several things so let's just go ahead and i'm gonna kind of pick off where we left off um finishing the first turn i just wanted to get this down on video so you guys can actually see the full sort of the process of a turn um so you saw there was supposed to be a barrage the first turn which we skipped i skipped um there was there would be the refitting of the airplanes which we didn't have to do because we didn't have any used yet um then there's the command phase which we did and that was all the activations so that was you know all the different fronts during their activations, which I've cleared up um, the activations here. So next would be the supply phase. Um, supply is pretty standard in this game. It's um, trace, so for the Soviets, you can see trace to the red and white here, over here. And what it is is each of your units, they have they have to be either on a road or within four hexes of a road or railroad. And then if they can get within that, then you can, and if you can follow that road all the way back to a point of supply here, then we're good. Um, Germans, they have theirs up here. So they're the white and black. Russians are the red and white. And then over here, you'll see these are um, ones that can change. So they, I think they start off German. And then after the Soviets get up here, when you take that spot and you get a unit there, it switches over to a Soviet um, supply point. So you trace supply. Um, after the first turn, I mean, we didn't have to. I had kind of mentioned it while I was playing over here while I advanced. Um, just mechanized it. I wanted him to go out of supply. Supplies blocked by zone of control, enemy zone of control. You know, it's common for most of these types of games. Uh, pretty standard stuff, but just wanted to explain that for you guys. So after you check supply, you go to the end of turn phase. And that, and here's the part where I, other thing I missed from the first turn, which is the Volksturm return. So the Volksturm, or Volksturm, I don't know how you pronounce it exactly, but basically what it is, is. These units up here in this box, the Volkstorm, um, they're like you know, like the People's Army. What they are is, and I'll explain it because I'll actually go into the beginning of the second turn just to show you guys because I don't know for sure if I'm going to do another video. So I just want to show you guys uh, on here. So, But this is where they would go back to that box. And you start off with two of them. All right, then you do the Sudden Death Victory. You check for Sudden Death Victory. Um, it's first turn. We are not at Sudden Death Victory. So we continue on. Turn advanced segment. All right, so now we go on to the next turn. And I'll go through from the beginning. So, no barrage phase because that was the first turn only, which we skipped. Now the air unit phase. Refitted units return and grounded units go to refit. So, you can see here, we have these units um, in the refit. They return. Let's see here. Let me just put them back. 
Trying to get you guys all twisted up here. Whoop. Camera's going to go flying. All right. So we had, I didn't use the German at all. I used two, third Belarus in front, and then one of the, um, one of the second Belarus in front. And now you can see the grounded goes to refit. So now next turn, the beginning, he'll come back. Okay. All right. Now the reinforcement phase. And because we are advancing from the first to the second turn, put that there. So we're in the second turn, which I'll also adjust. I'll adjust the activation. So four, four, four Germans. Six for the second Belarus in front and three. So I put there on four. This goes down to six. And we're here. Oh, stays on three. All right, cool. Um, and so the first is the reinforcements, which you can see we have them stacked right here. There are no German reinforcements, but there are Russian reinforcements. And they get... Um, All right, very nice. Okay, so if you look, basically what happens is there's, let me go ahead and kind of set this down here a little bit. Oh, we're gonna look at them. So this was the second turn reinforcements. It's all Russian. And a couple things here. First of all, if you look at the um, top right of the unit, or the chit here, the command chits, you can see a two. So that you, you, you just look at the units, you can know where to put them on there. But then on that turn track, it does list those things. So, um, all right, so then it did say, so these these are activation or command chits here. So those just go right into the chit cup. So you notice how I said the first turn, it was a lot of Germans drawing Germans, drawing them. Well, we've already added, now we're gonna add, uh, two Belarus in front, and then a third Belarus in front. So we already added three more Soviets and no more Germans. Like I said, there's only, I think, one or two more Germans that come into the game. All right, so in that 3G, uh, it said F. So what you do when you have a reinforcement like this is it's placed on, you go find a letter, it said F, so place here, and then it has a movement turn. So it starts off, all your replacements start off with or these would be reinforcements, sorry. All the reinforcements start off with a movement turn, which at eight, that's pretty nice. So, hmm. okay, all right, I'll stop there. All right, so, boom, those are the reinforcements. Now we do the replacement segment, which you look under the turn track on the bottom under the two replacements, Germans two, Soviet one. Those are the points you can spend refitting um, or building units that are already lost. So let's see here, we have, um, yeah, that's what I thought. So um, the Germans have two, the Russians have one. So what we wanna do is, yeah, I'm going to, wait a second. Is it mechanized? Mechanized might be uh, more. Let me double check here in the rules. I'm double check for you guys, so make sure you know. Okay, um, that's right. So their special rules are that that for the Soviets, non-mechanized and mechanized, replacing a step is one point. For the Germans, replacing non-mechanized is one point. Replacing mechanized is two. And the Russians can come back, can make a unit and spend two points to come back full. A unit was eliminated, excuse me. Versus the um, Germans can only do one step. 
Yep, a German unit may now return from being previously eliminated at full strength in one turn. And that's for any German unit. So what we'll do is, let's see, what was over here? Oh, that's a good one. You know what, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to spend our two points um, to replenish this this unit here, this uh, mechanized half track, and put them there. Boom. So you're looking good. All right, so the Soviets get one. Uh, do we have... Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace that one that was eliminated, rebuilt. We're going to rebuild him. So he does come back on his reduced side. And he goes back with his headquarters, which he was. And All right, so rebuilt may overstack, and then they have to they get in a movement as well. So... There we go. So he starts on his headquarters, and he's got to move. Um, and he, he has to move because, obviously, if you look, he doesn't, uh, he'd be he'd be overstacked. That's too many units. So he's going to move here. And, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll go with him there. Okay. Um, and that is the replenishment phase or replenishment um, segment sorry so reinforcement replacement and now the Volksturm deployment segment so this is one that I skipped in the first turn should have happened so the Volksturm you get to look in your box you get two of them and what you can do is you can place the, each of these units in a city German controlled that is at least three hexes away from a Soviet unit so what these are I mean they are only you know, zero one zero, like roadblocks here. They're one step, zero one zero, but they're like little little speed bumps, little roadblocks. But they can help. I mean every every unit helps, especially in this game when you're the you're the Germans. So let's go ahead and you want to look and you want to kind of where do I expect a breakthrough, right? Where do I expect that I would really need these guys? Right now the Soviets don't have a whole lot going on. I would say one here. Two, three, and then maybe over here looks like they might be trying to push one, two, three. So model in here. Boom. All right. And then the next phase, you'd go from the, this is the reinforcement phase. You go on to the command phase where you start drawing shits. So I apologize for not including that um, kind of originally or whatever. I sort of wrapped up my video and then I realized, like I said, yeah, I need to talk about all that stuff. That's part of the turn, part of the game. So. There you go. Um, that's a complete turn from Konigsberg. Soviet attack on East Ru Prussia, 1945. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.